Hello guys, this here is the Voltec Life Pod, the original one. It did come with this security upgrade. I'm gonna test the security on this device because as some of you may know, the lock picking lawyer famously got into this with a fork. And what he did is, while this was locked, he took the compression off the side and basically got a fork in there and was able to hit the program button. And then while it was locked, he was able to reprogram the device and open it up with the new code. That's since been fixed. That's what this is about, the security upgrade. All they did was not allow the device to be reprogrammed while it's locked. So if you get something in there, can touch the program button, you won't be able to reprogram the device. There's a couple other good channels. One is uh, Bosnian Bill. He reviews some of these safes. And then there's one called Handgun Safe Research which is really good. Basically, after watching his videos, I was kind of planning on getting a uh, Shadow Systems, Shadow Vault, I can't remember the name of it, but it's got an SNG uh, electronic uh, keypad on the top. And I was thinking about getting one of the Simplex mechanical safes, like from Fort Knox, but they only have either a thousand, two thousand combinations. That's not a lot. Like if you have somebody that wants to get into that safe, someone in your household you could try 50 a day and in a month they could figure out your code and how to get in so I thought that was maybe not the most secure although the case is pretty good but the the shadow vault that I mentioned has up I think you can do like up to a million combinations on the keypad and it was actually recommended by the handgun safe research channel who um, has done a really great job taking apart these safes and breaking into them and showing how flimsy most of them really are so I got an idea when I was watching his channel he didn't do it to this specific safe but on, he said there's a problem with Voltec safes. They all have similar to this, the keypad on the bottom. And he basically gets a screwdriver in there and gets this off, this piece here, pops it off. And then there's a hole there and he gets a paper clip and can basically wiggle the latch and open the safe. So that's what I'm gonna try to do here today. I haven't seen anybody else on YouTube look at this and see if this can come off and easily get in there still. So hopefully a lot of you will find this useful. It's something I want to see myself. So since there's no video, I'm just going to go ahead and do it myself. I got a pretty good deal on this safe. So I'm okay with damaging it, possibly ruining it for this video. If it does seem safe and I'm not able to get in there and open this using this method, I think I'd be comfortable with this as a, as a safe. It's got pretty good uh, size in there. It's got this storage here. It, this version came with the uh, security cable that you can mount in there and like tie around a piece of furniture or something. Uh, it's got the backup key. And the thing I like about this safe is you can uh, disable the key as a backup so it can't be picked because that's a problem with a lot of these safes also. And if the battery dies on you, you can plug in via a micro USB so you can type in your code and get it open. Uh, so that's an option. And it came with this uh, little lanyard or something and then... Uh, the pluck foam too that you can cut out just to the size of whatever you're storing in there. Pretty lightweight, kind of looks good, easy to like just throw in a bag or something. I do like it, so I'm, I'm kind of hoping it passes the test. I'm gonna lock it up, use the default code, which uh, right now is one, two, three, four. So you just hold the button down, it's locked, okay? And locked, all right? Now, We'll try to get this thing open here. Oh yeah, it does seem pretty weak, like that's gonna come off pretty quickly here. Hopefully I don't cut myself and gush blood everywhere. see something if I can wedge this open with the with this one then I'll be able to get under here I think that's what I'm trying to do
guys, this is uh, pretty tough just to get in here. Which is a good sign. You can kind of see it's chipping away at the plastic there. But this piece, I thought, I thought it would be pretty quick to just snap it off. So I'm going to keep going with this a little bit. At this point, I kind of want to keep the thing and use it. But, oh shit, I broke the keypad. But I want to complete this video for you guys. I really want to get in there. Spin this around this way for a minute here. You can see it's pretty mashed up, pieces of the plastic coming off. Putting up a better fight than I thought it would. I thought this piece would just pop right off and I could get in there and I wanted to see if I could bend the paper clip and kind of wiggle the latch just like the guy in the video, Handgun Safe Research, did. Uh, this thing's putting up a pretty good fight, so I'm just going to turn off the video for now, keep at it, and I will be back with an update. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, now let me show you what's going on here. I wasn't able to get this piece off. Felt like I was gonna snap my screwdriver off. I had this thing in there just leveraging as much as I could, but I don't know, they must have done something different because that's on there pretty good. You can see here, it's all chipped up, mashed up, but I wasn't able to get it off. Look at the front of the case here. All bent up the side, look at that. And I couldn't get that off, so I mean, for my, uh, Use, I'm okay. I, I, I feel pretty secure with this thing. It still works. Locked. Unlocked. As you can see, I cracked the keypad. It's still working. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with that level of security. It's, it's going to take a lot for someone to get in. Probably a similar time. For someone with one of those heavy uh, steel like Fort Knox things to use a grinder or something and cut that thing open. This is this is pretty good for such a small lightweight thing like this. Waterproof. Okay. It's super light. It's super light. Uh, small. You just throw that in a backpack, take it with you, which is nice. So. I'm pretty I'm pretty impressed with these results, but I think that's pretty good. Now I don't know. If I'll just, I don't know, this thing's, it's still good, but maybe I'll buy a new one um, just to use, but definitely keep this as like a backup or, you know, store some other things in it too. So I like it guys, it's a pretty good deal. I, I got this thing, I think it was 80 or 90 on Amazon. Uh, some of them are like a hundred, the other ones like this were like 109, but this one, uh, because of the color, I got it like 80 or 90 bucks and it came with the security cable. It's got the um, the storage thing on the back there. It's got the pluck foam. You know, it's it's pretty good. Uh, pretty impressed with this device. The next thing to check, I guess, would be to make sure they actually did that security upgrade. And let me check. So let's see. Let's lock it. Now we'll try to do the program. Okay. Oh. 
No, that's not gonna work, okay. So you get that red beep, so it won't let you reprogram when it's locked. So that was that major security flaw. The other flaw I was worried about was popping this off and a hole in there to uh, hit the latch. But I wasn't able to get this off. I mean, you could do it, but it's I'd say it's about the same level of effort as uh, you know just grinding a safe open. So pretty secure, I think, and the convenience, the size of this thing is great. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. Subscribe if you want to see more. See you on the next one.